Well, it is no secret to those who know me, and I would imagine it's no secret to those of you who have been watching with us for a while and been able to hear me talk a little bit uh, through my teaching, through my preaching, that I often, I live in my head. <laughs> I carry out whole conversations with myself over what seems just a few moments, and it's delightful, at least, at least for me, it's delightful. I recognize that living in your own head can be a little overwhelming for some. I certainly remember a season of my life where that was an overwhelming uh, truth or an overwhelming reality that I lived with. But that's because in that season of my life where I found living in my head to be a little bit overwhelming, that season of my life was, well, you might say darker in a way. And, and in that way that I would say it would be this, in that season, I'm not sure how much I was doing what we've been talking about for the last several weeks. I'm not sure how much I was really letting Jesus lead through those dark times. I'm not sure how much I was actually allowing Jesus to have a seat at the table of my mind and be able to speak into the conversations that I was having with myself throughout that whole time. So of course, in those kind of seasons where Jesus isn't there, where you're not letting him lead, of course, for me at least, that's why those, those that season felt so dark, as if that darkness was just so overwhelming. But thankfully, again, never got to the extent that it can get to for some folks in this world. And thanks be to God for that. But here's the thing, that darkness, <laughs> it doesn't go away. And as I say this, I know it's something that you know too. The darkness of the world is just something that is, is there. It's still in my world. It's not something that just switched because all of a sudden I got closer to God and things changed and the darkness just stopped. Now, it didn't and it doesn't so much rain in my mind anymore though, praise God for that, because I can honestly say that, that now, and, and over time, over years, right, Jesus has come to that table. I finally let him have a seat there in the conversations of my own mind, so to speak, becoming a part of those conversations I like to have with myself, which means, praise God, there's no such thing as complete darkness up here, even when my world out here is full of it. If I sound like I'm a little more reflective today, it's for good reason. It's been what many would describe a darker season out there for me in my life. And I've been doing a lot of thinking, especially in these last three weeks or so, more thinking than usual. And again, for those of you that know me, you might be going, is that even possible? But it is. And it probably started in, in a more intentional way, in, in a way that kind of narrowed focus a little bit for me, when I lost a, a teammate of mine from high school that played right next to me on the offensive line all the way through. I was, I was there at tackle. He was my guard. He was there right with me. He died on January 17th of this year in a two-car collision back in my hometown. And, and this guy, Brandon, he had a huge heart a kind family, humor that was uplifting to those around him, took down those defenses. And along with that, we knew his family. I mean, I mean, in my hometown, that's the way it was. The team, we were a family. His family was a part of our family, that kind of a thing. And I got to know him and his twin brother who played on the team, who led us as a team, who, who uh, was a captain for the team, led our class in my senior year and junior year. And, and I still count it as a blessing to know them and to have known him who is only 34 years old. To say the least though, when you lose someone, especially that young, even if I haven't seen him in a while, I started counting my blessings a little bit deeper that day. But then not long after that, I saw on social media, on Facebook, one of the guys that was younger than me at seminary, who's now serving at a pastor out there in a congregation, uh, he received word that his battle with cancer was going to be coming to an end, but not in the way that we usually celebrate. He was told that he only had weeks and months to live. He and his wife since then have been 
have been posting their reflections during this journey, and I have been reading every single word that they write, as each one has been an incredible witness to the hope that you and I have in Jesus. And the level of introspection that they have been doing has been matching the depth of what I found myself in in this season that, that I'm finding myself in. And I find myself pausing and reading and absorbing each and every word as I consider in my own way how every single moment of my life is an absolute blessing and one that's not guaranteed. And all this comes after what I can only call a pretty heavy season this last month, maybe these last two months even. Thankfully not due to any, any conflicts or anything like that, but simply because that as we've walked together as a community here at Trinity Klein, there's just been some heavy things in this season when we take an honest look around at the general struggles that life throws our way. We're not special here at Trinity, that it's the darkness that finds its way into the lives of any human walking on this planet. Certainly, we faced death, right? Families, losing loved ones, losing mothers, grandmothers, losing uh, fathers and friends and brothers and children. I mean, y'all, it's been heavy and heavy for a reason, right? Because death is an enemy, but even for me on a more personal level, it's not just the, the death, but then just the general darkness of this world. We have this retreat here at Trinity called STARS, and I get the joy every January of walking alongside of high school students that lead that retreat. And again, just to watch the ways in which God can break through those seasons of darkness, right? To remove the lies that are so often just permeating everything that we do, especially for teenagers as I walk alongside of them. It's so humbling but so heavy too. So again, to say the least, it's been a reflective month for me. And I can tell you with all sincerity that, that without the promise, without the hope, without the joy that is mine because of Jesus, there is no way that I could have processed or continue to process the fullness of everything that has been happening in my world. And then on Sunday night, I was in a car accident that I have absolutely no idea how I was able to walk away from. I recognize that my thankfulness, the deep amount of gratitude that I have right now can be perceived by some as merely coincidental or statistically likely. And I totally get that skepticism. I totally understand it. I think I've had it a little bit myself walking along in life when I've heard other people's stories of things like that. But having lived through it, having both literally and figuratively sat in the driver's seat both Sunday night and from moving forward in this past week, I can't say it any other way. I am standing here only because of God's protection over me on Sunday night. Since I have much more to say, but I know the main question is likely there, what happened? I'll go ahead and get it out there. I was on my way up to bowling with our youth group. I had been down at MD Anderson for a hospital visit of one of our members. And we found our way onto one of the highways down there in Houston, right? Big old Houston, six lanes across. And for whatever reason, the lane that I was in became congested really, really quickly. And the car in front of me came to a stop, a really quick, abrupt stop, as you kind of imagine. And I remember saying out loud, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And then coming to a complete stop myself, looking around, even seeing the car right next to me is what it felt like, at least, and saying some sort of quick prayer, like, thank you, Jesus, only to one, two, three seconds later, complete smacked into the back of me trunk completely crushed in on itself. My airbag didn't go off. My head hit something. I'm still not sure what, but I didn't see it coming. I was calm. I was calm, I guess, but nonetheless, I, I immediately just reached for my phone and, and called 911 and all, all these things. I didn't lose consciousness. Even the paramedics were surprised by that situation. I texted just a few sets of people because I was low on my, my battery phone. I knew it was probably gonna be a long night. I waited for the paramedics to come. They were awesome and at their invitation, crawled out of that car with a sore leg because my foot was sitting there on the brake at a complete stop. Some soreness in my neck, pretty gnarly scar on my forehead and on the top of my head, uh, scraped up, but maybe that soreness here because of the seat belt. And I spent about five hours in the ER and with a true brother of mine by my side, but then I was cleared to return home with only instructions to take some ibuprofen if I felt some soreness or pain. 
and then to just watch for certain symptoms. And you see that night, that morning really, because I didn't get in until after midnight, it wasn't lost on me that I was walking into a house with a giant sticky pad on the wall with the drawing of what's called the Kairos Circle. And it's not some magical thing, it's a discipleship tool that a guy named Mike Breen kind of pointed out. When you look at Jesus' invitation in Mark chapter 15 and learn the fullness of what it means to let the kingdom of God come near as you repent and believe. You see, my girl group had just been talking about this the Monday before, sitting there in my house. And the, and the whole idea of it is that you spend some time allowing God to come close and near in those moments of life where things seem to pause, where time seems to no longer matter anymore because of either a significant high or a significant low. And how do you process that? How do you let God speak into that? Well, you spend this time in, in repentance, of turning a perspective of your mind, and belief, and his, I think as you do repentance through observation and reflection and discussion, and then in order to believe, to, to act out on this change of mind, you, you make a plan, you find some accountability, and you actually act on it, right? And you, in those times, again, where there's something big that's happened, something significant, so it's not lost on me, as I'm walking into my house, that that's gonna be sitting there, hanging on my wall, because I'm finding myself in one of those moments. One of those moments where, where God is going to draw close to me because I can't make sense of what happened. And I have the invitation now to honor that moment that God wants to say something, God wants to do something in my life. This week I've been telling folks that I've been learning the depth of what it means when Jesus tells us that today has enough worry on its own. So let tomorrow worry for itself. And I really do mean that. I've learned the depth of what that means to take each moment and each day for what it is, an absolute blessing. I've had so many moments that have drawn me into this deep gratitude just to be alive. Conversations that I, I wasn't promised, that I wasn't certain were going to happen, uh, text messages that I got, encouragements, generosity offered to me, emails. I never in my world thought I would be grateful for emails, but I was. Meetings. Who, who am I saying these things, right? Opportunities to still go about the work that God is placing in front of me. I was sitting at lunch. Tuesday with Pastor Gene, who you guys have gotten to know as you watch these videos, or maybe click to another one, but I was getting emotional as we were praying because I had my head bowed and I smelled food, delightful food that I know could have not happened because I almost wasn't here. This past week has been a wild ride and every moment for me at least, it's that kingdom of God breaking in because God has something to say to me and I can't ignore it. Not this week. Again, I would imagine it's easy to play the coincidence card in your mind. It just so happens, statistically speaking, all this other stuff, and I totally get it. I think I've been tempted to do it too, but there's some things that I just can't ignore and I won't because I'm not seeing ghosts. I'm not seeing, right, or hearing voices. I'm seeing God at work, even in the details of things, and it's lining up with everything that I've seen him tell me in his word. For instance, I share with you that it wasn't lost on me when I walked in my house that morning, that drawing that was on my wall. What a coincidence, right? I mean, I knew I was going to find myself in at least a week's long journey, if not longer, of processing what just happened. Fair enough. But here's something else about these last few months. At the end of December, I told myself, I was like, I was convicted. I'm finally gonna put some, some action to some plans that I have had for years. For years, since I moved into my house about five years ago, I had these big grand plans of putting certain Bible verses up on the walls in my house, okay? So I, I tell people I didn't have much of a life last year. There's more work than play. And so I'd finally saved up enough that I said, you know what, Lee, just do it. Just do, just go ahead and get some of these, right? And so I have a few of those, right? There's a big sign, the one that started it all that I wanted. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 9, prominently displayed there on the wall. And that one came in there at the, the beginning of January. I had started this whole dream of, of, of putting the words around my house like the words call me to do. Right about a week and a half later, I put up my grandfather's favorite verse that he had, Joshua 24, 15. As for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. I got it, I hung it up on my wall. But there was one more 
There's one more that was coming in that actually had a little bit of a mistake when it was printed, and so they had to redo it. It delayed far more than the other signs, even though they were all coming in at the same time. And that was the words of Psalm 139, verses 7 to 10. You see, again, they're being a mix-up with the printing. They had to redo the sign and send the right one. Guys, do you know when that sign came in for me? Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Sunday was a busy day. I had a lot of stuff here at work. I had more things to do that evening. Again, I was going on a hospital visit. I had some youth things. I didn't have a whole lot of time at home, but I saw it. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and open up the box, set it exactly where it needs to go. And I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it the rest of the day. It was delightful that it was there, but that's all it is. I'd unboxed it, placed it where I need to go. And then that Sunday night, getting out of the ER, that Monday morning, bright and early, I found myself finally getting settled for bed, right? Getting ready, walking down the hallway one more time to turn off the lights. And as I walked down the hallway, the bottom of that sign is almost just screaming at me with the final words that are written on that sign that just got placed there that day. It said, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And I was humbled, because that's exactly what happened. These verses that have meant something to me since y'all, I was in sixth grade. That's how long I've been wanting that sign somewhere in my life. That's how much I've been clinging to those words that no matter where I go, no matter what happens in my life, God is going to be there. And here it was, these words speaking to me loud and clear. Call it a coincidence, if you will. But that's, that's the fullness of what it was that God is working. He's doing something in the midst of this awful tragedy that I know he didn't want. I know he didn't want all the damage and all the other stuff, but he's still working in it. I posted about most of what I just shared with you on Monday, and I had a student, a senior, text me that they read my words and just appreciated the depth of everything that I shared. I was un unpacking so much of what's been in my mind in the last month, last two months, especially the, the loss pieces. He just appreciated that I gave voice to some of those losses that I faced in my world that I was kind of keeping to myself. But I shared with him, not only was I learning the, the depth of what it means to, to let today worry about itself, tomorrow worry about itself, but in his words, he helped me to see how much I was learning what it means to have that persistent light raging against the darkness that is becoming at me in the season that I'm in, the season that we're in as a community, when, when, whenever people feel loss or, or different challenges, and that, that, that kind of darkness that's always coming at us, always coming at you. Then Tuesday, I walk into work. Again, a miracle that I even walk into work that day. I'm sitting in a worship team meeting, planning our services for this Sunday, and I confess that I hadn't really looked at the, the scripture yet that was selected, couldn't even remember what it was, and then I take a few moments to open it up, and I find these words. After the past 24, 48 hours, I find these words from Matthew 5, 13 to 16 that we had picked forever ago to be talking about today. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Friends, I can tell you very confidently who my light is and who your light is that is present and is raging against the darkness of your life, no matter how big or how small you might define that darkness for yourself. That light is Jesus Christ. The light that is with you always to the very end of the age. God so loved this world. God so loved you, right? Loved this world in all of its darkness, loved you in all of its darkness, that he sent his son into this world to overcome it to overcome that darkness. And by his death and by his resurrection, he has overcome it in every single darkness that you're ever going to walk through. And I'm speaking from experience now. 
And there's a day coming when there will only be light, when he will return once and for all to establish his kingdom in all of its fullness. And until then, what's happening, not just in my life, but also in yours, his kingdom is bursting in. It's trying to let that light shine in every bit of that darkness to break it from within and without. Why would Jesus be so bold here to look at this crowd and say, You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth, a city on a hill, because he's with you. That's his promise to you, to the very end of the age. The good works that come out of your life, that come out of mine, that's his work. That's stuff that he's doing. It's his words, his acts, his thoughts that become yours. That's the light that shines. Friends, if you've ever seen good in any of us here at Trinity Klein, if you've ever seen good in me, if you've ever felt a taste for for something I've done or said or something that's been said through the channel here, right? Any of these videos, right? If you've ever felt peace or, or life or light that's come from us, no, it's not us. It's him. It's him working in every minute of every day that we let him lead us. Every single time, it's him. If you ever wonder if God can use a broken sinner to shine that light, the answer is yes. You've got one standing right in front of you right now. And he's been doing it over the last 34 years in my life. If he can do it in my life, he can do it in yours. The question is, will you let him get that close so we can do the same kind of work on your life. Call it a coincidence if you want, right? <laughs> totally understand why there's that temptation out there, but I can't. I'm here today because God made it clear to me that he still has work to do in my life, which gives me something to say. And it's my prayer that in whatever time it takes you, you'll come to see the exact same thing at play. God is going to place something on your heart that needs to be said to someone else who is walking in some sort of darkness, and they're going to need to hear it with all the fullness that God is bringing with it, to hear it with gentleness, to, to hear it with respect, to hear it with the fullness of grace and truth and full of the light to break the darkness of those around you. So friends, let them. Let him do that work in you. And how do you do that? What does that look like? It looks like listening to him, looking to him, watching for him to do something in your life. And you don't have to order some big old sign to start. Just write a verse on a sticky note, put it in your pocket, and carry it around with you and look at it every time you feel it, right? Carry it with you all day, all week. Put it on the mirror in your bathroom. Put it like by your bedside when you go to sleep so at least you see it. Maybe once you feel like you've gotten a hold of it, you've memorized it, then pick another one. Add another one to that list, right? Put the scripture in the background of your phone. Print out a piece of paper. Tape it somewhere in your in your living situation, whatever that means. Surround yourself with what he has to say in whatever form that takes, Memorize quick prayers for when you wake up. Just saying, God, thank you for waking me up. I need you today. Come along in Jesus' name, amen. All right? Quick prayer on the way to work or the way to school. Quick prayer as you're walking into a building. Quick prayer as you come home at night, whatever it is, right? That's the light breaking into the darkness and keeping it at bay. You can think about how you want God to be more present all you want, but until you let him until your actions follow those desires, till you let his word be in front of you, even in the smallest of ways, until you start those quick little prayers here and there, and that is a start, even a quick little prayer is a start, there's a good chance that you're not gonna see the progress until you start taking those baby steps. But once you do, watch it grow. Watch that light in your life be the peace and the comfort that I experienced Sunday night sitting on a highway where I thought I should have been dead. Friends, let Jesus come close to you, especially in those hard times, especially through those difficult ones, those dark times, so that you can come to discover the depth 
of the love that he has for you so that others might see the same light that he is shining in your life as you walk through those dark times, as that light overflows from your life into theirs. Every single moment that you're given for the rest of your life, because I can tell you it's not guaranteed. And too often in life, we realize that when it's too late, but I can tell you what is guaranteed. He is. And every promise that he's made to you is guaranteed too. He will be with you always. It's the final promise that he makes to his people in the Gospel of Matthew, his final words. He will be with you always. So friends, let him drive. Let him take that wheel. Let him speak and allow yourself to listen. Let him lead. And y'all, let's do it together. That's why we're here. That's why we reach out every single week. Let him speak. And as he does, listen. Take it to heart. Digest it. And I can promise you, I can assure you, you're going to discover the depth of his power and the peace and the joy and the love, and the grace, and the light that he has for your life. Amen? Amen. Go in that peace, friends. Discover that joy, and let his light shine. Let him come close to you, especially in those dark times, and I promise you will be blessed. Folks, I just want to thank you so much for watching along with us today. It truly has been an honor and a blessing. I am thankful for you. Subscribe to our channel. It is great to to be able to spread the good news and just share in this ministry with you. We hope to see you next time. And until then, let your light shine by letting him lead the way.